Hello my friends, uh, welcome back to another tutorial. It's been a while. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year to all. It's uh, 2023 and here's to more fantastic little paintings and tutorials and uh, lots of learning, okay? Um, I'm going to paint a beautiful little snow scene for you today. Um, it's been requested by a lot of people. I showed you in, I think, the last video, um, a painting I did, a beautiful snow scene with a red umbrella. A woman walking with a red, well, a person walking with a red umbrella. Um, it was very, very nice. So I had a lot of interest in getting a tutorial up online for that painting. So I'm going to do it for you today. Now, I'm going to do this one on an upright canvas. I think it just, aesthetically, it would look better with the umbrella as well and the figure of the person standing. Um, so an upright canvas, 12 by 16. Um, I didn't prime this. It's not primed. It's just a raw canvas, just a normal shop purchased canvas. I gave it a rub of uh, sandpaper, very light sandpaper, and I'm going to put some linseed oil on this sky of this, okay, just to help the paint move around. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in my last tutorial about my materials and all that kind of stuff was cleaning brushes. Um, basically, when I'm finished, I just take off the excess off the brush with some tissue. So I rub off the excess. I get a little jar of turpentine, or just on its own. Give them a good swirl around, give them a good clean. Then dry them. I do that then again, uh, maybe three or four times, just to make sure everything is out. Then give them just a really good dry and stand them upright in a jar. That's what I do. Um, you can buy special um, soaps and all that kind of stuff um i tried them in the past they, they work quite well but i just find this um my brushes just last just as long really and they stay soft just as long by giving them a good clean in turpentine and um a good dry just stand them upright and leave them and it'll be fine so you don't have to go to any extremes cleaning brushes really um so that's it okay let's crack on having fun with this i haven't painted in a while um i'm kind of redecorating my bathroom in the house inside so uh for the past two or three weeks i've been very very busy and you know there hasn't been a minute to spare every day so i'm anxious to do a bit of painting i haven't picked up my brush now in about two weeks i would say um so i'm i'm excited to get painting let's say now i will also have a tutorial coming for um suki who's a very very good patron of mine and a good friend um, she's been with me since the very beginning. Suki, I have a painting coming for you in the next couple of days of that lovely little house, stone house in a forest. Um, I might just put it on my regular YouTube page for everyone to see because I think there'll be a lot of learning in that video. So I have that coming very soon, okay? Suki, I haven't forgotten about you at all. Don't worry. Um, so let's go and have a bit of fun with this anyway. Nice snow scene. Um, let's keep it simple but very nice colours, okay? I'll see you very shortly, in just a sec. Okay, here we go. Now, I have my palette, and there's a reference photograph. Isn't that lovely? Um, beautiful kind of greeny blues in this. I think it's really nice. So my colours are titanium white, burnt umber, magenta, phthalo blue, cerulean blue. That's an important one for this painting. Naples yellow, alizarin crimson, and lamp black. A couple of colours, okay? A couple of nice colours. Now, what I'm going to do is... First of all, just take a pencil. I'm going to just put in my, what I call, the horizon line. So that's where the land kind of meets the sky and the higher background. So that's where every, the kind of the finish point will be in the road, okay? So it's like a footpath. Um, so I'm just going to come along, maybe just, let's say, just over a third up. And go along like that. And just go up on a little rise, just a little rise. Let's put a little path, just as a suggestion. Um, it's not, I want to try and get a little bit of perspective in this. So it's going to come out just like that. It's probably a bit narrow. We can even turn it slightly in the distance like that, look. Just to give us a little perspective. It's just a very loose um, suggestion, that's all. That's all I need to do. Okay, let's paint. Let's paint, my friends. I'm excited. I'm going to take some linseed oil. And just on a little tissue, okay, a small bit of tissue like that, tiny bit, I'm going to just give the top half of this painting a very light rub of linseed oil, just look here and there. And all that's going to do is help the paint move around nicely so I can blend colours in 
really well on the sky. I just want to be able to blend nicely. Um, if you leave it dry as it is, dry canvas, uh, you might find it starts drying in a little bit too quickly for you. And you might find it difficult to blend colors nicely together. So I think this just helps. Um, it just helps the paint move around and it gives you plenty of time to blend colors together, that's all. It's like a liquid clear, I would say, uh, but this is less, slightly less oily. It's just a nice thin coat of linseed oil. That's all I want, okay, nice and simple. I'm gonna get a brush. Let's take a big brush, let's go for a big brush. I have some linseed oil with some turpentine in the jar here next to me, and I have some tissue. Now this is an old, an old enough brush. I've done about 40 paintings with this brush so far, and the tip is still nice and soft, uh, but as you can see, it's nice and it's kind of thick with paint down in here. So I need to give that a really good clean at some stage, but it's fine for another painting, I would say. Colors, I'm gonna start with cerulean blue and white, okay? I'm gonna just go for that first. It's a very greeny kind of a blue, see that? And it's a nice alternative for a snow scene as well, I think. Take a tiny, tiny touch of turpentine just on the corner of your brush, just to thin that ever so slightly, okay? Remember, we're going for a kind of a thin coat, not a very, very thick coat. Let me have a look. Oh, you can probably see how that's moving around. Let me just hold the canvas. You can see how that's moving around really nicely. And you can see I'm putting on a very thin coat of this. See? Very, very thin. Don't go crazy with thick, thick paint in oil painting. Um, later coats will be thicker. So that's why I like, I like to make a nice thin coat when I'm painting a sky or a background like this. And then you build your thicker colors on top of that. I had a couple of questions on my YouTube channel there um, only just recently in the past couple of days about paint lifting off um, and not staying on the canvas. And I would say it's probably because you're putting on far too much paint too early on. And when you put on thick paint and you put on another layer of thick paint, you tend to lift off the color underneath. So that's why I would always put a very thin coat like this on when starting, okay? Very, very thin. Just add a little bit of turpentine, that's all. And as I said, if you just oil the canvas or if it's a well-primed canvas, spread it really up, right out and across. You see, I'm spreading it right across, getting it nice and thin. Cerulean blue and white, a beautiful color look for a beautiful kind of a snow scene color. Now, as we come up on that, I'm going to start adding a little touch of phthalo. Now, be very, very careful with phthalo, okay? I had another question. Um, somebody put phthalo blue on their canvas and they couldn't get rid of it. It was just, they were trying to change the color and they could not get the phthalo blue off their canvas. It's a very, very strong, it's probably the strongest uh, pigmented color in oil painting, I think. A tiny bit is loads. Look how far that goes, look. Just a tiny piece on the corner of your brush. That's all you need. It does go very far. So be very careful with phthalo blue. I keep saying it, the tiniest little amount is all you need. Now a touch of magenta into that. So I'm still quite thin, look. Let's put a bit of that up there. And I would say a very important color in this painting is magenta. Because to keep that kind of snowy, mystic snowy feel, a little touch of the magenta, a pinky blue is lovely. And it just warms the whole snow scene up. It really does. Just try it, that's all I'm saying. Just try it. Little touch of magenta in with that bluey color. And you get a very subtle kind of a pinky blue as well. So for snow scenes, this is fantastic all together. Really fantastic. Now, I wanna just add a little bit of cerulean blue up on top. Just a little touch, maybe a touch of magenta with that. Um, I just wanna give it a slightly richer color on top, high up in the sky. Go right across and then soften it down. And most of this will be covered by trees anyway, so look, we really, really don't have to worry too much about getting all this background just right. It's just a background color, that's all. Now what I'm gonna do is just pop a little bit of white, a little bit of white on the brush, just around the center here. Just to create that kind of a bright spot in the center. 
And you may know this is probably not even making a difference, but just keep adding little tiny bits and you will see it in the end. Now that's fine, I'm going to leave it at that. Let's have some fun with some trees. That's the next step, I think. Some fun with some trees. I'm looking at my brushes now. I need to get a nice little brush for this. A nice kind of a smallish flat brush that we can have a little bit of fun with. Um, okay, I have medium brush. Let me think, let me think. I'm going to go for a nice rough brush. You see this very rough, worn brush? They're perfect for trees. Don't throw them out. They're perfect for trees. I use these right down until they go right down, okay? They're perfect. And I'm going to get a nice colour for this. Let's go with some cerulean blue, some magenta. And you notice I'm going thicker, okay? I'm going much thicker now with my paint. Okay, um, a little touch of white just to make it slightly opaque. The only, I, I'm not using white to lighten the colour. I'm using white to make it a thick, chalky kind of a pasty colour so it covers well. You see what I mean? Then add more colour. That's all I'm using white for. If you use the colours on their own, they can be very rich and kind of translucent. The white just kind of thickens the colour enough to cover the canvas fairly well. Now I have a nice thick colour there, you see that? Nice and thick on my brush. I'm simply going to just block in where I think the trees are. And my plan is to just come up at the sides like this, okay? So it's inviting us into the centre of the painting. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to roll on. Like that. And you can see just round in little circles. And what I'm even going to do is, let me just take another hint of pink. Just for the background. I'm going to soften it into the sky in the background, look. So we get that beautiful soft feeling. A soft kind of almost like a misty sort of a wintry day where it just disappears off into the distance. You see, just softening it in as you go. And think in terms of layers. So this is the far off layer. So don't be too particular with all of this. This will just be a background kind of a color showing through all the trees and foliage, that kind of thing. So I'm not too concerned really about getting this perfect look. I'm just kind of blocking it in giving it a nice soft, misty feeling. Over here, block that in. I'm gonna start going richer, because as it comes outwards and towards us, okay, it starts getting richer and darker. So, phthalo blue and magenta, and a little touch of cerulean, just to kind of keep that greeny, bluey hue going throughout. A little more cerulean. I'm using just paint now. Just paint on its own. Look. You see how that's covering now. And it will soften into the background slightly, but that's fine. That's what I like. Just keep adding little bits of colour into it as you go. A nice little snow scene. Come on, let's have some fun with all of this. Softening it upwards, see, into that background, just giving it a nice soft feeling. And you can leave some of your brush strokes if you like. That just adds more movement into the trees. Okay, you don't have to go softening all of this now with a blender brush or anything like that. Just leave all these little swirls. They add nice movement into the background. Okay, now, how is that looking so far? That's not bad. The next thing I'm going to do is start really putting some darks in. So what we'll have is a nice rich dark kind of colour going along the bottom and then a nice separation, dark to light, okay? So that's what I want to do. And this is where we get to have some fun with colour. Now let's try some magenta and a little burnt umber. So we get a beautiful warm brownie colour and even a touch of black into that. So this lovely little brownie colour could be like little bushes and stuff like that in behind. See, I'm just kind of softening it through here and there. And it's just to add a hint of colour, that's all. Remember, warm colours, okay? Warm and cool colours really catch your eye. 
So the cool blues on with the warm pinky browns here, they're really going to catch your eye when it's finished. So don't be afraid. Just pop a little touch of it in here and there and just soften it in. Soften it through very randomly, okay? It just, it just kind of adds to the depth of the painting, I feel. See what I mean? We're starting to get some nice colours going throughout this. Next, let me just give that a wipe off my brush. Let's go for some nice dark, really dark colours. Thalo blue, magenta, and a little black. So now we're going for, you see, nice little dark, purpley, plummy kind of colours. Don't forget your magenta. That's what keeps it kind of warm and inviting. And the nice thing about these worn brushes is you can see the way it just creates a very rough outside when you're moving the brush around. It just almost creates kind of just natural bushes and things like that. Isn't that lovely? I like, rather than having just a flat brush, um, if you want to use bristle, you can use bristle. I just love this kind of natural rough feeling it gives these rough brushes. It's fantastic. It just makes life so much easier in painting. It really does. Okay, now, so I think we're pretty okay with that. I'm going to start putting some snow on these. I think let's have a bit of fun with some snow. Let's go. Come on. Give that brush a quick clean there. Just get some of that paint off. Rub it on your tissue. Um, we might get away with this one. Or I'm thinking maybe even a slightly flatter soft brush would work as well. I go with this lovely little soft flat brush. Here. Okay, we have a, I'm not sure what number it is. It's about number 10 maybe. Um, nice and soft, but it's not perfectly flat. You see that? So it's slightly worn. And it's kind of opened at the top very slightly. That's perfect now for putting snow on trees, that kind of thing. So I just dampen it very quickly and dry it. We don't want it kind of wet. Let's take some nice bright colours. I'm going to go for a very bright pink, okay? White, lots of white. It's pretty much just paint on its own. So that's why you're working up thicker layers. You see? So we started off with a very thin layer and we just added slightly thicker paint. And this is the thickest coat that we're going to be putting on now, okay? Little touch of magenta. And a little touch of Naples yellow. Now that was going to give me a beautiful, bright, rich, kind of a warm pinky glow for the snow on these trees. You can see my brush is loaded, fully loaded with paint. Let's, um, okay, let's just have some fun. Let's just have some fun. Let's start with the outside here. So you can see it's almost showing the light catching the trees, isn't it? It's kind of catching the snow. And I'm just dabbing with the corner of my brush. And I'm softening it backwards then into. Now, you see the way I picked up some of the background colour there on my brush? When that happens, just rub it very lightly on some tissue. Just take off that dirty colour, okay, and go back in. Pick up more. So then I'm starting a new layer like this, and I'm softening it backwards and down into the colour underneath. You see that? So it's kind of disappearing. Disappearing is the word. Already we can start to see some nice snow appearing on the trees. And the trick with this is just to do it in layers. So don't just go all over your area like this everywhere. You do it in little layers. Okay, I'm going to come out here now a little bit and do another one. I'm sort of staggering the brush as I'm going along. You see? Letting it soften back down into the background again. And that for me is probably the easiest way I can explain of just doing a nice little snow foliage. Um, just little layers. We do another one down here, look, so I can show you properly. Another little layer. So now we're creating perspective. We're pushing those backwards into the distance. And that's it. That's really the technique for all of the snow in this painting. Let's go with some more. Let's try some more. Let's get some white, magenta, 
and some Naples yellow. That Naples yellow really is just helping give that, say, that nice bright glow of the snow. Um, a lot of people, when they're painting snow scenes, they think of snow being white, just white, okay? It's not. No, snow can be white, it can be dark blue, it can be all of those colours, not just white. Uh, this is just the background colour now. I'm going to be putting trees in top over the over all of this. So don't be worried just yet. Now I'm going to go right out into the sky with a nice kind of a big branch. Okay, so I'm going to be painting a nice branch over here later. So I'm just getting this on now. While I had this colour on my brush, I'm going to go up here and just start putting some snow on these. Again, just let it dark, soften away back down into the background look. And you see what's happening is, it's picking up the dark colour and it's moving the dark colour around as well. So you're creating, you see, you're creating little lights and darks among the foliage. That's good. Okay. So you're beginning, to, you can kind of begin to see the snow thing start to come through. Now, I'm not going to copy the reference photograph exactly. I want to kind of put my own little bits in here as well. You, you know, I, I don't like to be trying to copy reference photographs identically. Um, a nice impression is enough for me. But I like to just add little branches myself and add little bits of snow here and there as well. So it's not set in stone. I find a lot of people all too often are trying to copy the photographs to a mirror image, a photographic image of what they're painting. That for me is just overkill. It's just too much. I don't, I don't get pleasure from trying to copy a photograph identically and get every single detail in there perfectly. It's just a bit much. Um, I don't enjoy painting like that. Okay. Now you can begin to see little bits of snow. That, by the way, is some light coming in my window behind me, and it's very annoying. So I'm just going to move my head in front of that so you don't have to deal with the annoyance of this little white dot appearing on my canvas every two seconds. For that, I apologise. And I'm just going to keep going with this now, just creating sort of different layers here and there. Just to roughen up the background, you see. Just dab, 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 and twist my brush. You see the way I'm twisting my brush? Sort of in a semicircle. That just gives you a nice random effect. Okay. Now, let me just stand back for a moment and take a look. Always stand back and look at what you're painting. That's very important. Now, where's that light coming in? That is so annoying, isn't it? Ah, it's a little gap in the door behind me. That is annoying. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some masking tape. And I'm going to go up there and cover that little gap because this is going to drive me absolutely crazy. Just give me one moment, please. Now, a little bit of tape over that tiny gap there. Ah, there we go. That has done the job. Right, I'm going to start painting some trees. Let's go and do some trees. Um, right, I'm going to start putting a couple in, in the distance over there. Okay, let's take a small pointy brush. With that, let's take some burnt umber. Some nice thin burnt umber, not too thick. Okay, because you want to get nice solid brush lines with this. So a little bit of turpentine will help. Let's go and just put a couple of little nice burnt umber lines in there. And you can see it's just softening out into the background, which is perfect, you see. It just disappears up into that background. And this is just one or two, okay? It's just a suggestion of a couple of tree trunks just off in the distance there. A couple of branches and that sort of thing. Don't have to go mad with all of this. Then I'm going to just take some black and put some black in just towards the bottom. Just to suggest the light is catching the top half of the tree. 
Okay. You see what I mean? Now that's fine. I really think we don't need any more than that. If you wanted to go further with this, let's just take a little Naples yellow. Up a little Naples yellow up high, just on some of those branches, look. So now you can see we had a little bit of light catching the tree trunk. But we're going to be putting foliage over this anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Let's take um, first a little dark blue foliage. So I'm going with magenta, phthalo blue. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to just put a little dark foliage over this, just here and there, look. Just a little. Then clean the brush. And I'm going to go into this lovely bright colour that we had. Little white, little magenta. Just even those two colours. And then pop a little of that over these. Okay? Just here and there. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to start putting in a few branches here and there. For this, I'm going for black and a little burnt umber. And realistically, if you look at the reference photograph, if you want to download the photograph, you can. It's on my reference links. Um, if you want to download it, you'll see really that most of these branches are just a, a dark black, basically. A couple of brown ones, but in reality, looking at the photograph, they're just a lot of dark lines. Let's put a suggestion. Look, just one or two creeping up here and there. And again, I will put some foliage over these as well. So just one or two creeping out here and there. Remember, lots of turpentine. Don't be shy with the turpentine. That will help it flow nicely. And I'm kind of softening them then in the background. You see, I'm kind of just flicking them up. Create the impression of lots of little tree trunks way off in the distance, you see? Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to go to this extreme. You really don't. But it's just to add a bit of interest in between all that lovely snow off in the distance. So again, I'll take some light colour and just create a little couple of, you see, just dabbing over some of these. And that just kind of sits them down and it pushes them back and all that kind of thing into the distance, doesn't it? So now you can see it's starting to look like we've a lot of detail, but in reality, it's not a lot of detail. We just dabbed a couple of bits of snow in between branches. And it looks like there's been a lot of work done, doesn't it? But it hasn't. You can see it's just taken us 10 minutes, really. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is get some nice rich branches going. I need a slightly larger round brush. Let me see if I can find one here now somewhere. The trouble with me is, you know, I put brushes down and I forget where I put them. I guess it's just my old age. I'm 43 tomorrow, by the way. 43. But I don't feel like it. You know, I feel like a man in my 30s. 43 years old I am. Don't be long going, does it? Life goes very, very quick. I'm going to just take some of the star colour and I'm just going to start popping um, some branches in from the outside. So they're coming in from outside the photograph. You see what I mean? Now, this is what I mean by just kind of using my own artistic license. And again, I'll cover a lot of this with snow, but this is really just to give something... Um, in the foreground something i'm going to go to a smaller brush actually because that's uh, quite thick now you can see the way it's difficult to get the lines to stay on that thick paint really you don't really need to get them to be very sharp sharp lines if they're softening into the paint in the background that's fine 
I think that actually looks nicer. It, you know, it, it, it helps to create a lot more perspective in your painting. I think, I think it's, it, it's better rather than having solid, solid lines on your, your painting. Um, this just makes it all nice and soft. The idea is I'm going to have a big tree trunk coming up here in front of this. So I want all of this little bit of detail just in the background before I do my big tree. That's all. That's really all it is. Rather than trying to go around my big tree trunk in a moment, at least I have a lot of this stuff done. And you can come down like this, look, into the painting. So it's just really giving a little bit of detail. That's all. Now you can go further with that. And I think I will. I'm going to take some thick white. And I'm just going to start popping some thick white here and there, just on top of some of those. You see? That just creates a little highlight on top of those branches and all that kind of stuff. Little dabs of white paint it really does make a difference. You see, if you can see already, it's beginning to look like a light and a dark on the branch. Just by a little couple of tiny flicks here and there with some white. Look, just even on its own, just pop it in. It's all about just kind of catching the eye and capturing the imagination for me when I paint. Um, letting the viewer fill in the blanks. Okay, I think a little touch of snow just here and there on that. And we're pretty much ready to start coming down on the background. Let's take some magenta. You notice I haven't even touched my crimson yet. Let's try a bit of crimson for a change, shall we? Nice white pinky colour I have. And let's just pop that. You could even use a palette knife as well for this. That would be quite nice. Or a fan brush even would look quite nice as well. I'm just dabbing it across just here and there, you see. Just to allow it to kind of fizzle off into the background just slightly. That's loads. That really is loads. Okay. Um, there's one last tree trunk I want to put in here. Just for the painting, I think one thick one on this side would make a big difference. Let me get some burnt umber with a little black. And maybe some magenta, just to keep it in that kind of pinky hue with the rest of the painting. Now, here we go. Nice, rich, pinky, brownish kind of a colour. I'll start um, here. Let's just go right up now in front of those. I'm going to turn my hand so you can see. Okay, just like that. And then we'll keep going straight up and give it a little wiggle like that, look. Now that's all I want to do there with that brush. I'm then going to get some black. So I'm using slightly thicker color now, all right? Black and some magenta. And I'm going to just start darkening some of those here and there. Really just to give a little texture and to you know, add a little bit of something to the painting. As it comes up, I'm going to go for some burnt umber with crimson. So I want a nice warm colour up on top. Some Naples yellow as well. So you can see, I'm just going to add that now into that colour there, you see? Creating a nice warmth higher up on the tree branch. There we go. On the tree trunk, rather. And we'll do the same on this one. And then Naples yellow with some crimson. I'm going to use that to sort of catch some light higher up. And look, I'm not even worried about getting it absolutely perfect, you can see. And lastly, I'm just going to put in some 
branches with a small pointy brush. So let's come off of this, a couple of little branches here and there. Again, you don't have to go absolutely crazy with this, just a few, a few is loads, because we'll have a lot of snow going over all of this very soon. You can kind of get the idea now, can't you? One or two coming off of it down here. A little bit of black. Put some nice rich black just down towards the bottom to create a little shadow on one side of those branches there. Okay. No, that's even fine. You don't really have to go any further than that. Um, you could add a little touch to snow if you wanted to. Let's put a little bit of snow on this. The snow is going to be slightly bluey this time. So a little phthalo blue with white. A little cerulean blue perhaps. And we could just add some little touches of snow with that colour. And again, you probably find this difficult to put on. But just remember, just take your time, add little touches as you go. Little small touches is all you need. Okay? Take some white, pop some white in around up here. And you can see it's all getting very thick now, isn't it? That's why I like to keep my early layers nice and thin. So keep your thick paint always for last, if you can. Just be careful. Now, I'm going to put on some snow over that. And I think, let's try a fan brush. So why not? Let's just get a fan brush and try it. I have a nice little fan brush here. Let me just clean my fan brush very quickly for a moment. It's uh, quite tough at the moment. I don't think I cleaned it properly the last time, but let's just give it a quick clean here on some tissue. And start having some fun with this snow. Pop a lot of snow on here. Also, you notice your thinner is probably getting very dirty. It would be a good idea to change it, okay? Um, okay, let's go. Some Naples yellow. I have some here, look. Naples yellow, little magenta, and a decent amount of white, look. Pop loads of white in there. Now, see it? Load it on one side. And let's just add a little snow over that here and there. So you're breaking up the tree then, you see? You're breaking up the tree trunk. I don't have to go too much with this. Just a very, very rough tree, snow-covered tree. That's all. That's fine. We're done. Let's move on down. And let's put in all of this down here. Okay? I'm going to take some white and some cerulean blue. I like to kind of really drive on when I'm painting, really kind of go for it. I don't like to spend too much time, you know, absorbing and talking about different elements. I like to just paint. That's why my tutorials can be maybe a little bit intense uh, because I just go along very quickly. I do apologize if that's the case. And if you're finding it difficult to follow me along, I do apologize. But I just really like to get painting done, you know, uh, while I'm here. I, I don't like to spend too much time talking about different aspects of painting rather than just paint. Grab the brush and paint. That's my, that's my motto. Grab your brush. Okay, I'm going to put in a nice layer all the way down of cerulean blue with white. Maybe a touch of magenta. Keep it warm. I 
I could use a bigger brush for this if I wanted. You could too if you want. Just use a bigger brush, a slightly bigger brush. Absolutely. But I'm just getting, you know, the kind of background colours in. Some lowly and blue, a little thalo perhaps. And lots of white. And some thinners that will help the paint flow nicely. Some magenta. So I'm kind of, you see, I'm kind of adding little touches of different colours as I go. Generally, in painting, when the landscape comes forward, um, it tends to get kind of slightly deeper in colour, okay? So that means far off colours are slightly lighter, and I'll be lightening the background there now very soon, just off in the distance. But generally, I kind of darken the colours as they come down towards the front of the painting. It creates a nice perspective in the painting. Scrape that in there, just cover all your canvas. And again, thin, thin mixes, okay? Very thin mixes in this. Plenty of cerulean because the colour throughout that painting is cerulean, isn't it? So keep plenty of cerulean in your mixes. That will tie it all together. You can see I've gone much more pinky now. That's no harm. Let's just add a little bit of warmth to the painting. Now, there we go. That's the background in. Nice little background painted. Let me grab some white for my palette, if you don't mind. Need some white. And I'm going to start putting in some light. So I want to show the impression of the landscape catching the light from the sun here and there, if you understand what I mean. So I'm going to take a nice... A slightly smaller brush. I'm actually going to change my thinners because it's quite dirty. Look at that. So let's just pour that out somewhere there and pop some fresh thinners. Turpentine with linseed oil. Let's pop a little of that in there. Let's put some light across here. Dampen my brush slightly. Let's take some titanium white. Um, some magenta and a little Naples yellow. This now will create a beautiful light going across the landscape. Let me show you. Magenta, Naples yellow and some white. So what I want to do is catch that and just pop it in up there. Look. And then I'm kind of just softening it as it comes down. You see? A little more pink, I would say. You can just be very random with this. So just remember, you're only just kind of popping in some light on the snow and making it a snowy effect. You see what I mean? That's all. So already we have that nice light, don't we? Now I will be putting some knife work on this as well later, so don't fret. This is not the finished article. I'm going to pop in with my brush upright, suggestion of some little bits of, I don't know, grasses or bushy sort of bits and pieces sticking up just there like that, you see? Just with your brush, grab your brush and do it. Let's get some more of that nice colour. Maybe put a nice little suggestion of a little plant or something. You know, it's just to create some bits of light coming down and catching the landscape, okay? That's all. It's now I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm actually going to pop some shadows in here and there on the other side. I'll take phthalo blue with some magenta, some white, and a little, um, let me see, a little black, okay? 
pop a little black in there, but don't forget your magenta. Again, magenta, it's probably important. I'm going to just pop a suggestion of some shadows coming down here. It could be trees from outside of the painting casting a shadow. See what I mean? Bit more phthalo blue. You see, it's just very random. Pop a little bit on over here. I'm just popping it in. See, just here and there. Then I'm going to go to a smaller brush. Now, let me find a small brush. And um, boom, 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 I'll go with a nice little small flat. And I'm going to take some of that very bright color. Magenta, Naples, yellow and white again. And I'm going to go for a very bright, bright sunlit color being cast across the snow, okay? So here, for instance, I'm just dragging the brush along, letting it sort of hit and miss. See that? Hit and miss. Just remember those words, hit and miss. It's a very hit and miss kind of brush stroke. Just letting it touch the canvas every now and then. And it's just creating a nice snowy feeling on the landscape, that's all. Now I'll soften some of those in slightly. I don't want to kind of too thick. I'll be putting lots of knife work on the bottom half of this painting here now very, very so very, very soon, okay? And I'll show you why. Firstly, I'm just going to take my flat, small flat brush. I'm going to give that a clean. And I'm going to go into this bright colour. Let me get some white and some blue. And let me just see if that kind of holds there now. Okay, let's just go with some white on its own. And I'm just going to kind of put in a suggestion of some little bits of grassy stuff sticking up here and there in between. It's really just to give the impression of lots of stuff going on. That's all. See what I mean? Now I could do it another way as well. I could just flick. Flick like this. Okay, that's another way of doing it. You see, it's just adding little bits of this and little bits of that. Just kind of messing around with the tools you have. Now, that's nice there, you see? Little fan brush technique. And let's just create some nice rough area here and there with the fan brush as well. Look. For me, this really, it's kind of, it's all about just having some fun, really. Enjoying doing a little snow scene. Now, one more thing I'm going to do is just darken some of those whites. So I have a little darker colour. I'm going to darken some of them, look. just to give them a little bit of darkness on one side. And let's try some of these flicking techniques. 
see just flicking it upwards with the corner of your brush and it's all just adding a little bit of detail into the, the painting not too much you don't have to go crazy now with all of this because the next step I'm going to do is take a palette knife and I'm just going to simply drag some white across the canvas here and there I'm probably saying uh, it's messing up everything that you've already done and maybe it is but I just think dragging some white across a canvas like this it just just gives a nice effect snow scenes are very kind of hit and miss um, if you if you know what I mean it's it, you just have to make it just look very busy with a snow scene especially just make it look like there's a lot of stuff going on so here for example I just want to get a nice thick light band of color up here on this side okay without overkilling it so we've a nice bright frosty kind of a feeling there so far now i'm anxious to move on i want to get this little person with the umbrella finished um i'm going to make this up as i go along okay let's just get some black maybe a little brown Now, I'm crossing my fingers. I hope this works out. Let's imagine the umbrella is around here somewhere. So let's just go like this. Let's make the person now nice and thick, not too, not too small, okay? I want you to be able to see on the canvas. Okay, so the arms come out and go in like that. How does that look? Not too bad? maybe go with some burnt umber i'm should i make it bigger i'm not sure i don't want to go too big but i don't want it to be too small that it just gets lost on the canvas either i want it to be a nice size do you understand what i mean yeah i think that's good now i'll just pop a little of that light bluey color just here and there for a little bit of light look just catch a little bit of light that's all Now, before I go any further, I just want to pop in some footprints. So, alternating footprints like this. Getting bigger as they come towards us, okay? Just like that and then just just take some nice bright color some white just pop a little white around just kind of dabbing it around here and there now this is just an impression really okay it's all i'm trying to do is create an impression And you could even just kind of soften them in as well i'm just being very random with my brush now um you know i could spend an hour working on little footprints but look for the purpose of the tutorial i just want to keep it simple okay that's all i want to do keep it simple pop a little bit of dark blue into some of those okay and then i'm just going to come across and sort of merge those slightly into the background so for instance just put a little little bit of snow just sort of help them just to disappear slightly that's all see what i mean just to help them slightly doesn't have to be perfect all of this 
Now I will kind of I might do a little bit more work on these later. Um, but look, just for the purpose of this tutorial, I just wanted to make it. Now they're probably a little bit big. So if you want to just soften them outwards, you can. Soften some of them away. You can absolutely do that. It's really just for th this tutorial. Now let's let's do an umbrella. Who would like to paint an umbrella? So we need a nice bright red. I'm going to get cadmium red. A nice rich red. Now this should bring the painting to life. This should really make the painting pop. Here's hoping. Okay. Here's hoping. Let's just take lots of cadmium red on its own. And let's paint an umbrella. I've painted a few umbrellas now, so I'm kind of fairly good at the shape. Um, so let's go like that. Then let's go like that. And let's go like that. Then we'll go up a little bit here, a little bit there. And then the meat. Would that be okay? Well, let's just fill it in and see. No, oh, a little bit straighter, perhaps. Then I'll take some crimson and just add some dark to this. Because we don't want it just a flat red colour, do we? Now what I'm going to do is, to create the shadow of the person behind the umbrella, I'm simply going to take some burnt umber and I'm going to put the impression of somebody behind. You can see the head and the shoulders and stuff behind the umbrella. I'm just going to put the impression of that in the front one here. So we can begin to see then, it's like you can almost see through the umbrella to the shadow, to the person, the outline of the person behind. Does that make sense? Just a little bit of dark colour, that's all. And then let's just pop lots of rich red to create some of the triangles. You can see the way I'm just kind of pulling it in to a point. Creating some of those triangles, that's all. And another thing I'm going to do is add some light onto the top of that. So I'm simply going to take some Naples yellow with some cadmium red and just suggest a little bit of light just here and there, you see? Up on top. The last thing I need to do with this is just take a little black, pop a little black in the centre here. Like so. And, I mean, there's no reason why we have to keep adding to this, okay? No reason at all. Let me take a look around and see. Is there anything you would like to add in take some brown perhaps put in a couple of little small little suggestions of little, tiny bits of grass just popping up um not grass because i know grass doesn't grow in the winter but little impressions of little bits and pieces just popping up between the snow that's all and then we could take a small palette knife and let's just add nice thick chunky bits of snow here and there. It's all about just filling the painting, making it look very thick with snow and all that kind of thing, okay? 
That's what it's all about. Don't be shy. Just grab your palette knife and lots of thick paint. If you even if you have to go over some of the work that you've just done, it doesn't matter. It's snow. You know, snow is just very random and very thick. You could even just grab a pat knife and go right over all of this with snow if you wanted to, okay? It's up to yourself. It's your painting, you can do what you like. Remember that. It's just about having some fun. Okay? That's all. Have some fun. With that, my friends, I am going to sign this painting. You could add more snow coming in or a couple of branches, maybe one on either side. I might add a bit more snow up there, actually. Let me just sign this first. Okay, just a quick signature there in the corner. I'll finish that properly later. Let's get some white. I want to put some white snow up in that corner over there. I'm going to take my fan brush. Lots of thick white paint. And let's just bring... A little bit of more snow in just up here. And you could add even a couple of more branches into this as well if you wanted to. Cover some of that tree trunk, I think, just a little bit more. So you can see most of our background colours are covered. Okay, so that's why I was saying don't be too fussy with your background when painting a snow scene. It's really, you don't really have to. Just keep it simple. There. Just one or two branches now. One or two little branches coming out. Just as a suggestion. Now, I did kind of simplify this. I would, if I was painting this myself, I would kind of really take my time and, you know, maybe stop halfway through, grab a coffee. Um, but you see, I only have a limited time for tutorial painting. I don't want to drag this on too much because you will get bored. So I just try to give you kind of a nice, simple, quick impression of how to make a nice little snow scene. That's all. And there we are, my friends finished now if you're not comfortable with footprints in the snow you could just rub them out and put a nice little shadow now i could even do that because i'm not happy with those footprints at all and if you know me right now you know that you know if, if i don't like something i'm just going to change it a little light on that side okay so a little light there now what i'm going to do is rub out these footprints okay just gonna rub those out and I think do you know what a shadow might even look better now I know there will still need to be footprints there only slight okay so let me just put a very light impression of them in there soften them away but I'm going to put a nice strong shadow. I think that might look a little nicer. Let me get some dark bluey colour. Put a nice little shadow. Oh, so let's imagine the sun is coming from behind. Okay. I'm casting a nice shadow. Off of the person there, you see. Like that. I think that's fine. There we go. Finish, my friends. Now, if you wanted to pop a little... Now, I'm doodling, aren't I? I'll pop a little touch of snow. Here and there. Just on the umbrella. Just like that. We're done. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. Um, I might add a couple of dark blades of almost like dead grass just popping up here and there. 
I think just over some of that. Just one or two, okay? And then just sit some of those down with a little white. Now it's probably overkill. I might just remove some of these later. Um, you know, just rub them out with your brush and pop a load of snow with some knife or something, palette knife, over it. The risk is you can overdo it and make a mess. So I'm going to leave it at that. There you go. Thank you so much, my friends. Let me zoom in slightly for you. I think I created a nice simple snow scene. And when that's framed, I think that would look very, very nice, won't it? Very eye-catching. So thank you, and until next time, um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have subscribed, please do. You're missing a lot. Um, I'll see you very soon. I have a lovely little house in the woods coming up for Suki, my good friend, and um, I look forward to painting that, something dark and mysterious. Okay? Go and have some fun with that. Let me know what you think. Um, if you have any questions, please just do ask. Okay? I'm here to help. Happy painting. And God bless you all. And Happy New Year. Thank you, my friends.